In this segment, we're gonna we're out here at a local uh, commercial building setup. We're gonna kind of discuss some issues with water supply, uh, hitting a hydrant, some different hydrant choices, and some some things that go into how we wrap and 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 do our various water supply lays. When we talk about water supply, water supply encompasses a lot of different characteristics. For some of us, it may be establishing some type of a drafting operation. For others, when we talk about working off of a uh, pressurized water supply, we look at, uh, are we gonna do a forward lay? Are we gonna do some type of reverse lay operation? But <clears throat> our general choices when it comes to hydrants are usually predetermined. There are some things that, that become real important for us to, uh, properly know what our flow is in order to be able to supply what our needs at that pump are. And some of those things that come into mind are, number one, knowing the flow of, of the lines on your truck. If you had every line off of your truck or your engine and flowing water, pumping, pumping water at a big fire, what, what would be your potential water need? Is it 1,000 gallons a minute? Is it 1,200 gallons a minute? Is it 1,500 gallons a minute? That kind of gives us a starting point for knowing at our maximum use, what are we going to need to be able to generate as far as flow at our engine? <clears throat> that gives us our capability to decide when we start to look at water, our different water supply options, which is the best option to choose. Most of the time, those of us who are using some type of pressurized water supply or hydrant situation, you know, a lot of times we just wrap the closest hydrant, lay into, lay into our fire scene, we make those connections and everything's good. Maybe it's a one-line fire, maybe it's a two-line fire. When we get into those big fire scenarios, we almost, uh, that water supply development becomes the, the, the most limiting factor or one of the most limiting factors on the fire ground. So when we start looking at choices for water supply, particularly in the pressurized environment, we have to start considering what our water supply, a water supply delivery system is capable of. And, and what that boils down to is, you know, if you have a city that in your city, you only, they only lay 12 inch mains and you have two hydrants every 300 feet, fantastic, awesome. You don't have a water supply, supply problem. And where I work in central Ohio, we have issues of, of multiply different sized mains. So if, for example, we might have a six inch main that runs down one side of the street and a 24 inch main that runs down the other side of the street. So it becomes important for us to know where our big mains lie so that when we do have those big fire events and you are faced with the, the possibility of, do I choose a hydrant on this side of the street or do I choose a hydrant on that side of the street, that you're picking the right hydrant based off of what your need is. In our case, that may involve shutting down major thoroughfares, city streets, even taking uh, whole city blocks out of the equation as far as transport, access, ingress, and egress. And many times, many different departments, they, they color code using the NFPA color coding system, the tops of their hydrants for different water supply volumes. I personally have never been able to remember that color coding system. and it for really for us on the street when it what it boils down to is a lot of times you pick the closest hydrant and go with it and then everything else any other water supply delivery need gets added to that or we call in additional resources to make that happen in a place like this where maybe your private hydrants are one color maybe your city hydrants are another color maybe your hydrants are all the same color which is the case where I work um, it, we don't have the luxury of knowing by that color coding system what our big hydrant is. So we really have to start thinking about using, utilizing things like engineering diagrams from our city engineers, and we call it a water atlas here in central Ohio. And it's a book, it's about this big, and basically we have, the entire city is mapped out, it gives you major, major mains, what their size are, and, and usually hydrant location. So these are things to consider uh, when you start thinking about fires that go to multiple alarms or greater alarms. One of our standard operating procedures or, or our rules are is that if we have a second alarm or, or a larger fire, greater alarm fire, everyone in our city is supposed to get up. If it's at night, they come to the watch booth, we get the water atlas out, we have a little round table discussion about, you know, if we end up on this fire ground, 
Where are we going to bring water from? Where's the best place to bring water from? So these, there are some some benefits to that as well as you know that's just the general communication and, and overall uh, getting that water atlas out taking a look at it and seeing what's going on within your own city water delivery becomes very important because it may not affect you on that particular run but who knows a month two months three months a year down the road you may have that big event where you need to kind of understand that information so those water atlas those engineering uh, the, those water engineering diagrams can become very very important to us as firefighters